The four color problem is a mathematical problem about relations between areas on a surface, presented as a map coloring problem around the middle of the 19th century. What later became the four color theorem is the first major mathematical theorem to be proved by means of a computer. The proof, given by Apple and Hawken at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, was presented in 1976. Here, however, we go back to the 19th century for a closer look at the solution that was suggested at the time. Francis Guthrie, born in London, 1831, posed the four-color problem sometime around 1850. Can the areas on any map be colored with at most four colors, such that no pair of neighboring areas get the same color? Guthrie drew a map of four areas, all bordering on each other, where obviously four colors are needed but where also one area is enclosed by the three others, and thus secluded from any added area, which could then be given the same color as the secluded one. This applies to any area being enclosed by an odd number of areas. The enclosing cycle, being odd, requires three colors, and the enclosed area then requires the fourth color. We can call this the principle of the seclusion of the fourth color, even if Francis probably did not use those words himself. From this he tried to prove that four colors actually do suffice. But as Francis of the brother Frederick noted some thirty years later, the proof which my brother gave did not seem altogether satisfactory to himself. In spite of Francis' misgivings, though, as we shall see, he was definitely on to something. The three areas enclosing the fourth on Guthrie's map form a cycle. A cycle on a map is a sequence of areas connected by borders, such that when you traverse the entire sequence, you wind up where you started. Any map that requires three colors or more must contain a cycle of an odd number of areas. A checkerboard has no odd cycle and is thus two colorable, but if you merge a pair of neighboring squares into a rectangle, you get odd cycles all over the board, and a third color is needed. In addition to an odd cycle, any four color requiring map must contain an area that borders on all areas on the cycle. And if there is another area also bordering on every area on the cycle, and the map is to be four colored, the two areas must be given the same color. What remains to be shown is that any two areas that must be given equal colors in every four coloring of a given map are separated by an odd cycle. So any area that requires the fourth color will always be secluded from any other area that requires the fourth color. When our only concern is which areas border on which. A map can be represented by points and lines, where each point represents an area, and if two areas represented by points A and B, say, are neighbors, this is represented by the line AB. We call this a graph, and for historical reasons, we describe graphs in terms of vertices, edges, and faces, as if they were projections of polyhedra onto the plane. Vertices is the plural of vertex, which is Latin for corner. A graph is planar if it can be drawn in such a way that no edges cross. We assume that every graph representing a map is planar. Formally, a graph G is an ordered pair V, E, where V is the set of vertices, and E is the set of edges in G. If U and V are vertices in G connected by an edge E, we write E equals U V, and we say that U and V are adjacent at the end vertices of E, and that U and V are joined by E. A path is a succession of vertices adjacent to each other, and if the last is adjacent to the first, we have a cycle. A wheel graph comprises a cycle, a hub, and the spokes joining the hub to the cycle. A wheel graph may look like a wheel, but it doesn't have to. Given a set of vertices S in a graph G, if no vertex in S is adjacent to any other vertex in S, then S is an independent set in G. If every other vertex in G has a neighbor in S, then S is maximal, since adding a vertex to S would destroy its independence. A K coloring of a graph is a partition of its vertex set into K independent sets. A graph that requires K colors and can be colored with K colors is K chromatic. A K chromatic graph is K critical if for every edge in the graph, the graph without that edge can be colored with less than K colors. The three critical graphs are the odd cycles, 
and the four critical graphs are the odd wheels, plus a possibly infinite variation of other graphs. Our argument relates to subcritical graphs and color identical pairs. A k subcritical graph is a k critical graph with one edge removed. The removal of the edge makes the k subcritical graph k minus one chromatic. The n vertices of the removed edge must receive identical colors in every k minus one coloring of the subcritical graph. So joining them would naturally increase the color requirement to k. But as we shall see, the structure that induces the color identity in a five subcritical graph prevents the color identical vertices from being joined on the plane. Two non-real four critical graphs of some interest are the Maser spindle and the Gerch graph. The Maser spindle is the simplest non-real four critical graph. It contains four or five cycles, and for each cycle there's a pair of additional vertices that can be seen as a split hub. The Gerch graph has no triangles, but requires four colors nonetheless. It's the simplest triangle-free four critical graph, but it's also non-planar. On the plane, every four critical graph has at least four triangles. The set of four critical graphs has defied any attempt at characterization, so trying to fit the principle of the seclusion of the fourth color in with the characterization of the four critical graphs simply won't work. To see where the principle fits in, we need to look at subcritical graphs and color identical pairs. Let's see be a four critical graph where from we remove an edge with n vertices u and v and let s be equal to c minus u v. s is then a four subcritical three chromatic graph. Now, in every three coloring of s, u and v must have equal colors, because if there were a three coloring of s in which u and v had different colors, that would also have been a three coloring of c, and c could not have been four critical. We say that u and v form a color identical pair, but how does the graph induce color identity? The subcritical graph S is a sequence of single vertices and edges. Let W be the middle vertex, and let D and E be the edges. We start by coloring U red. Then D is constrained by U to green and blue. W is constrained by D to red. E is constrained by W to green and blue. And V is constrained by E to red. This gives us our color identity, U, V plus the color identical pairs u, w, and v, w. We say that a vertex constraint to a single color is fixed to that color, and that a k-1 vertical subgraph of a k-chromatic graph constraint to a set of k-1 colors is fixed to that color set, even if its vertices are not color-fixed individually. S is then a color fixation chain. When in a k-chromatic graph a single vertex v is adjacent to every vertex in a k-1 critical subgraph S, V and S are mutually color fixed. When S gets its k-1 colors, V is fixed to the color S did not get, and when V gets its color, S is fixed to the remaining k-1 colors. It is possible for a vertex to be color fixed by an independent set of k-1 vertices. This works nicely with three colors, but with four colors, you have to go above the plane. In a graph that has no triangles, but still requires at least four colors, you're also above the plane, and without the mechanical coloring constraints of the triangles, a color identity is given solely by the set of possible distributions of k colors among the cycles in a graph. On a plane, however, the triangles rule, and here the only way a single vertex can be color fixed in a four chromatic graph is by being adjacent to every vertex in a three critical graph, that is, an out cycle. The combination of the vertex and the cycle is a wheel, and with an odd cycle we get an odd wheel, which is the simplest type of four critical graph, and also the only type of four critical graph in which a vertex can be color fixed. This is of course very important, and we want to make it very clear. For every four critical graph G, if G has a vertex V that is adjacent to every other vertex in G, then removing V leaves a face bounded by all the other vertices in G, and since G minus V is 3 chromatic, G minus V must be an odd cycle, and G must be an odd wheel. And for every non-wheel for critical graph G, and for every vertex V in G, there must be at least one other vertex U in G, independent of V, that can be given the same color as V. Or in other words, the odd wheel is the only four critical graph that has a maximal independent set with only one member. 
so there is no non-wheel for critical graph with a vertex that always gets a unique color. And consequently, no non-wheel for critical graph with a vertex that can be color fixed. Given two vertices U and V that are both adjacent to every vertex in the same alt cycle, regardless of how the cycle is colored, U and V must have equal colors. So U, V is a color identical pair. But to avoid edge crossing and non-planarity, U and V must be on opposite sides of the cycle. This is the principle of the seclusion of the fourth color applied to planar graphs. The two vertices and the cycle make up the pair of cycle sharing wheels. When two odd wheels share a hub, their cycles are fixed to the same color set. Given such a pair, with a shared hub on the outside of both, place one hub with spokes inside each cycle. This gives a color fixation chain of four wheels, where the first share a cycle with the second, the second share a hub with the third, and the third share a cycle with the fourth. We can describe this kind of arrangement as a chain of alternating hubs and cycles, where all the hubs are fixed to the same color, and all the cycles are fixed to the same color set. Every sub-chain that starts and ends for the hub is then a subcritical of a five-critical graph. Every cycle in the four-chromatic color fixation chain divides the rest of the chain into two parts, the part inside and the part outside the cycle. So for every pair of color identical hubs in the chain, however close or distant, there's at least one cycle separating the two. We can summarize our argument as follows. Given a five critical graph G, for every edge E equal to UV in G, there's a four chromatic five subcritical graph H equal to G minus E for the color identical pair UV. If H is non-planar, so is G. But otherwise, the only structure that can induce a color identity and keep things on the plane is a color fixation chain of overlapping odd wheels where U and V are separated by a cycle. So even if H is planar, the edge that joins U and V in G must cross the cycle that separates them, making G non-planar. So in the end, the diversity and unruliness of the four critical graphs has no bearing on the four colored problem. And Francis Guthrie had a right hunch after all. The five subcritical color identity is itself contingent on the seclusion of the fourth color, which prevents the color identical vertices from being joined on the plane. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha